news is going to be agony. Not only will the Oklahoma-West Virginia game kick off at 11 a.m. Oklahoma time, by the way, the game will be on Fox Sports 1 on October 3rd, but Oklahoma's game the next week, that's right, the Sooners and the Longhorns, the Red River rivalry from Dallas, the October 10th game, that will also be an 11 a.m. Central Standard Time kickoff. That game will be on ABC, by the way. Defenses, I know, have it hard, but the bottom line is you got to be able to just get the job done. And in this era of football now where teams score more points, especially in the Big 12 with more teams, you know, the Baylors, the TCUs, it's always been the Texas Techs of the world that score a lot of points um, thanks to the passing attacks. We're in the era now where defenses, you know, if you can hold a team to 24 or 27 points, that might be actually considered a good game. If you can hold a team to about 400 yards of total offense, that might be considered a real good game because offenses are going to score points. Now, you might be thinking, well, is it just about throwing the ball predominantly? No. It's also, too, about catching the defense off guard. And teams now, we know in football, of course, OU's done this for a while, uh, for the most part during the Stoops era um, in, in recent seasons, run the um, no-huddle offense, too, or a hurry-up offense. Of course, there's a difference between the two. Hurry up, you basically already know what the play is going to be. Your, your, your offense knows, and you snap the ball, you know, as soon as you get up there, uh, set. No-huddle, a little bit different because you, you have everybody at the last scrimmage, but you make your play call right then and there coming from the sideline, and change formations if you need to. But the bottom line is, is that teams now don't use as much play clock as they used to. Therefore, they're running more plays. More plays means more opportunities for scores. And that's really the, um, the bottom line as far as, you know, being more opportunistic. The fact that not as much uh, clock um, elapses. So, you know, for, for the Sooners, I'm not saying that the game against Tulsa in any way, shape, or form um, is excusable. I mean, you still can't give up over 600 yards of total offense, especially, no disrespect to Tulsa, to a non-major conference school. And the Golden Hurricane, you know, much of that game had a field day against that secondary, had wide open players. I mean, not just one receiver, but three. And that day they really made the Tulsa QB uh, Dane Evans, you know, look like Aaron Rodgers, if you will. Still have to play better defense, but, you know, if, if you're thinking that Oklahoma's defense, their definition is going to be shut out the opponent, that's always the goal, but I don't know how realistic you can expect that to be. Again, offenses today, especially in the Big 12, more advanced and plus two, they don't take up as much clock as they used to. So that's just it. For the Sooners, They'll get a good test from a West Virginia offense so far is pretty similar to OU's in terms of production. Both um, both offenses average in the low 40s per game in terms of points. I think West Virginia has a couple more points per game on average. Skylar Harris completed about 70% of his passes. It's a good ground attack with Smallwood, you know, with Wendell Smallwood over Shell. Shell. Um, good receiver in Sheldon Gibson for the Mountaineers. Already four TDs on the season. I think he averages about... Um, about 20, uh, 25, 26 yards per catch. Um, but the thing about West Virginia so far is, you know, who they played. That's going to be one thing that you're going to hear a lot about entering Saturday is the fact that their competition, which I'll break down in a little bit, may not have, you know, tested the Mountaineers entering Saturday's Big 12 opener. But we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But so far, if you're a Mountaineer fan on both sides of the ball, especially defense, it's only given up eight points a game. You really have to like what you've seen. And so far, the play of Carl Joseph, the all-Big 12 safety, that's really been something positive for the uh, Mountaineers. For the Sooners, entering uh, this particular matchup health-wise, the bye week was extremely beneficial. Very, very beneficial. It does appear as if the you know two of the um, 
linemen that are leaders for this team, have the experience for this team. You're going to have them back. They'll practice this week from what Bob Stoops said in the Monday press conference. Nila Kazatani, as well as um, you know the other veteran up front, Ty Darlington, uh, both, it looks like, will be ready after Kazatani miss, missed much of that game because of the ankle injury. And, of course, the knee injury, um, Darlington didn't even suit out for the Tulsa game. So the extra week of rest did not hurt those guys. Though. In fact, very beneficial. They should be ready to go. And speaking of ready to go, it looks like Jordan Thomas, as we mentioned earlier, it looks like he will play. Who knows if he'll start, but he broke a team rule uh, two weeks ago, and it costed him that game against Tulsa. And poor P.J. Umbanasaur, uh, that guy's a true freshman, didn't see much of the uh, practice snaps entering that game against Tulsa. Um, but then again, he didn't know he was going to start either. He started, they threw him right into the fire, and Tulsa, you know, picked him like Charlie Daniels plays a fiddle. So um, it was good experience for him, but Tulsa was benefiting big time. Oh, you had to make some adjustments in that second half, and that at least slowed Tulsa down a little bit as a result, in my opinion. Um, but to me, the biggest key in this game for the Sooners is just don't trip over your own feet, all right? Um, Baker Mayfield, you can't ask more from him than what he has done uh, real recently. Um, he's considered actually a top five Heisman candidate, if you can believe that after the numbers that he put up, especially against uh, Tulsa, but the come from behind win against Tennessee was one word nationally that put him um, on the Heisman map. So the big thing for the Sooners, though, protect the ball. They didn't do a great job of that against Tulsa. Two fumbles, and it would lead to two Tulsa touchdowns. Um, so cut down the penalties. Obviously protect the ball. And Mayfield, it appears, is getting more and more confidence. They're going to go against the West Virginia defense. You know, Carl Joseph, we mentioned him earlier. You know, I think he leads the country in interceptions with three. So you have to be aware of him at all times. The ground attack, I'm not saying you got to run for 250 yards against West Virginia, which I don't think they can do anyway, but at least incorporate that you can run. So P. Ryan, he should be ready to go. Um, he got banged up a little bit against uh, Tulsa, but he should be ready to go for this one. And I think maybe another key that we're not giving enough credence to, Joe Mixon, look for him to have a nice game probably as a receiver as as opposed to just giving him the ball from the backfield. I think they will use him more frequently this game in terms of being a receiver. So for the Sooners, just don't beat yourself. And for West Virginia, again, you commend Holgerson and the group for a terrific start so far. But this is what I'm talking about, the competition. Their toughest game so far this year, you know, if you took if you take a look at quality opponent, was it Maryland? Maryland lost to Bowling Green by – Three touchdowns, okay? So West Virginia, they have yet to face a team of Oklahoma's speed, of Oklahoma's um, offensive package, and by the way, the game's in Norman as well. West Virginia, since joining the Big 12, 6-7 and seven on the road in conference games. And another trend I'm going to go with, too, as we get ready to wrap up our report, Sooners have never lost to the Mountaineers since West Virginia has joined the Big 12. 3-0 and for Oklahoma. Although last year's game in Morgantown, you know, Sooners got to a rough start. And one of the big things for the Sooners entering this game is they don't have to play those two terrific receivers that the uh, Mountaineers had from a year ago. They don't have to go against those guys. You might remember, you know, Mario Alford. I mean, my gosh, that, that guy was torching, you know, everybody last year. So at least you don't go against the top two receivers from the Mountaineers from 2014. Again, you still have to watch out for Gibson uh, because he can play. I think Oklahoma will give up some points in this game. They'll give up, you know, probably two or three touchdowns through the air, you know, because I do think West Virginia's offense will present problems. But I think the Sooners, because they've had that extra week to prepare, they will do a little bit better on coverage than what we saw against Tulsa, and they better if it's going to be a win. But I think also, too, even though West Virginia's defense returns a lot from a year ago, and on paper appears to be better, they haven't faced an offense like this yet. And I think the home field advantage – uh, will mean a lot in this game for the Sooners. So I look for Oklahoma to win this game. I'm going to go with 34-24 to 24, um, in this matchup. I look for the Sooners to get their fourth win of the year and build even more momentum entering the Texas game the following week. West Virginia's got a good team, but again, competition-wise, I know that you know, you know OU's win over Tennessee um, might have been dissipated a little bit in terms of quality with Tennessee's loss to Florida, but at least Oklahoma's faced that tough environment. At least they they still beat a, a, a team that's of higher quality than anybody that West Virginia has faced. And I think that will matter too. 
Look for OU speed to be a little bit too much in this game. And again, look for Mayfield to have another um, fantastic outing and to remain on that Heisman Trophy. Watch. I got OU winning 34-24 and covering that spread against West Virginia. By the way, before I wrap it up, um, we will be on location later this week from a surprise place. I'll be there for both my college football picks on Thursday or Friday, and of course the post game of OU West Virginia. So I'll be on location later this week, but we'll um, basically make that announcement at the time that I do those shows. Thanks for watching, everybody, and Boomer Sooner.